Hi there! So it's Holly here from Easy Mind, Easy Life. I got a bit sidetracked in the previous video. <laughs> so, um, yes, we kind of got a bit sidetracked with beliefs. Okay, more on beliefs and judgments and all of that. But the whole point of the video was really talking about how do we know if we're living in love, looking at the world through the eyes of love, or if we're looking at the world through the eyes of belief, of some belief that we've created inside, right? And it's not about, oh, your parents put it in you and, you know, or whatever, right, society. It's about us taking that on as truth. You choose to, right? You decide, oh yes, that's true. I'm gonna take that on just because they said it five million times in my childhood. I'm gonna take that on as truth. I can tell you there were things my parents said that didn't matter how many times they said it. <laughs> I knew in my heart that can't be right, right? What they were saying. But anyway, <laughs> like that doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound like that's what life's about, right? So, yes. The previous video was meant to be more about the three main things that show up and they're there for you to show you whether you are in love, right? In, in alignment with this beautiful loving energy, right? Or if you're in some kind of belief and looking at the world, you know, through this sort of tunnel vision because that's what belief does it creates like this tunnel vision that that's all that exists in that belief right once you create this belief and we'll go into different beliefs so you can have an understanding of it but okay so then you can see what I'm talking about the three beautiful things that show up for you to show you that you're not in alignment with this beautiful loving energy and you're on a tangent with some kind of belief right on this separate path right <laughs> is anger, fear, and sadness, right? So sadness, hurt, pain, whatever you want to call that third one, right? Different people call it different things. But hurt or pain creates sadness, and that's sometimes what takes us into depression, right? That pain. So uh, anger, we get angry, and that's because there's a belief in place, right, that we've put there, we've decided right that that's true we've decided so that every time that belief gets brought up again right the anger will flare up because like Ugh, right you're trying to defend yourself from that belief and we'll look at it with an example in a minute and then or fear right there's fears that are created from beliefs that oh this if this happens you know oh so i'm not safe basically fear is to keep you safe right because if that happens I'm gonna get hurt, right? I'm not safe. It could even be a fear of even losing your life. It's that unsafe, right? And then there's the intense sadness that some people take on, right? The, the pain, the hurt from that belief. And every time something comes up that reflects that belief back to you, you go back into that state. You'll start to cry and be very sad. So look out for those three things. Next time you get angry, right, rather than lash out at the person that created that for you, whatever that situation was, instead of lashing out at them, take a step back, right? Take a moment out of your day with that and look at it from outside, right? And start to look at it as to why did that make me angry? Why? Why do I feel this way? Try and go inside and find that belief that's trying to come up. Now, example, let's find an example. All right, so in my childhood, oh dear, there's just so many different things that I could, we could use, right? But let's say, okay, I've used this one many times before, but when my sister was born, right, and I felt cast aside, I felt that I'd become invisible and I felt that love had been taken away right so with that love taken away there's also the fear that love is something that can easily go away it's not something solid like love is you know like <laughs> love is love is love right so um but that's a different kind of love and i want to do a video on that but okay there's that fear of love will be taken away in my first relationship i was so afraid 
of losing that first boyfriend. I was so in love with him and I was so scared of losing him that I broke up with him. That fear overtook everything. It overtook how much I loved him, how much I wanted to be with him. None of that mattered because then I started to self-sabotage. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. There were a thousand reasons why I shouldn't stay with him. You know, that were created out of that fear that love is something fleeting that's going to be taken away anyway. So I'll save myself the pain and the hurt <laughs> and just deal with it. And I broke up with him. Never got to see where it could have gone to, but that was the experience, right? I was so afraid that one day, you know, because that's what love does, right? It just walks away. It's not there forever. And so I broke up with him. My belief was so strong that one day he would break up with me anyway, because love is something that you can't trust. Love is something that you can't, um, yeah, basically the word trust is the most important one. You know, it's, um, it's fickle. You know, love comes and goes. That's what I learned from my mum when I was little, that it can be taken away. And so that was my first relationship. And it ended because of my fear. I was so afraid that, well, it was going to end anyway, right? It had to end because that's what love does, right? Just as it comes, it goes. And so I broke up with him. You know, and uh, I was devastated for years after, but, you know, with, with guilt and shame and, you know, all the things that came after because I knew that I'd hurt him. He wasn't expecting that. Maybe he was, you know, maybe we were both on the same, on the same path of love is not something you can trust. It's only going to be taken away. But that's only a belief. Because, you know, as I say that, with my dad who is still alive, I felt complete and utter unconditional love. No matter what I did, no matter what I didn't do, no matter who I was, he always loved me and still loves me. He still sees me, you know, the me, the who I am, the real me. Not the me that could have been the doctor or could have been the, you know, whatever it is, you know, that parents fantasize that their kids are going to be all these fantastic things. Uh, that love had nothing to do with who I was going to be or who, he just loved me in the moment, every time for who I was, you know, and uh, it was like he could see me, the real me. And that love is still there, even though it's funny, isn't it? Because that love is still there and it's still constant in my life. I can call him anytime, talk about anything, and that love is still there, like a rock. It's solid. And yet, I created my whole belief around love over what happened with my mum. Isn't that fascinating that we do that? So I had a choice. I could have chosen no. Love is solid because my dad's there and he's been there the whole time. But I guess going through my childhood, I was kind of waiting for him to retract his love as well. Because if mum did, what's stopping him from withdrawing? You know what I mean? Taking his love back away from me. So it's not until now that I stopped to think, wow, he's been solid the whole time. He's never changed. He's always been there no matter what. You know, no matter what I've been through, no matter what I've said to them, He's always there with the same unconditional love. No conditions, nothing. I don't need to do anything for that love to be there. Isn't that amazing? So, you know, sometimes we fixate on something because it hurt us so much. There's that hurt, the initial, the original hurt. And so every time someone treats us later, like we're not good enough for love, we're not worthy of love, which is what came out of that, you know, event, out of that experience, then we get upset or we get angry. For a long time I was angry, you know, that she loved me for five years and then all of a sudden she doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> and so anytime someone would treat me as invisible or unlovable or unworthy of love or any of those things, I would either get really sad or really angry. 
And those two things were there to show me that I had put that in place, but it wasn't real. You see, it wasn't real. So there you go. So look out for those three things. And next time they come up, the fear, the anger, the sadness or the pain, the hurt, whatever you want to relate with the sadness, when those three things come up, sit with it and ask the question, what is it that you're trying to show me? What belief have I placed here that wants to be released? It wants to be set free because your spirit wants to be free. It doesn't want to be tied down with all these <laughs> beliefs. It's just chained down. It can't be free. <laughs> so, hmm. Yeah, next time any of those things come up, instead of reacting to the situation, take a step back for yourself and have a look at why. Why do I feel this way? Why am I reacting this way? Why is this coming up? Ask the question, because when you ask, the answers are revealed. All right, my darlings? I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.